So I tried to pick a different spot on campus that I haven't been. This is like some lot. It's like near campus. Um, and I kind of just wanted to talk about a few things. Firstly, like Valentine's Day. Okay. For everyone who had the adorable posts with their like spouses and their booze and all that shit, and they're all like married and cuddled up, that's awesome. But also, I've seen posts where there's like single people who are like feeling bad for being single. And like, no, don't feel bad for being single. It is like extremely easy to get paired up with a shitty person, right? Like, that's actually not hard. So congratulate yourself for like not being in a toxic relationship. If we learned nothing from, what is it? William and Marie, like, toxic relationships are real and that shit is normal. And you're not like ugly or too fat or too unworthy or too broken or too insert what the fuck ever just because like you're not in a relationship on Valentine's Day. Yeah, whatever. Also just realize as much as like marriage culture is like normalized, divor divorce culture is too. Cause a lot of people are paired up with the wrong people, honestly. So to everyone who has a good relationship, awesome. To everyone who's alone, awesome too. Like, you know, get a puppy or fucking something else. I don't know. So I wanted to say that. But also, I wanted to point out some shit that came up for me this week, mostly about, um, man, prison, prison. Uh, so, we interviewed a few people this week who ha have been like released from prison and they talked about how difficult it is to get like apartments, how difficult it is to get a job. Um, really so many things like some people have been like cut off completely from their families like just because they went to prison and other people have been like other other people are in prison and they're like innocent and there's this whole it's not even a culture of being like a pin pal but that's a thing like people in prison who you know their families have like um dissociated themselves from them for being in prison there are people who like write letters like they get pen pals and one person was in prison for 20 years and found like a number of pen pals who actually sent them money and so when they got out of prison they had like a nice stash of money that actually was just saved up from like their pen pal folks it's incredible it's also just incredible to realize like this is one thing that was pointed out like There's really like a prison industrial complex as in like prisons make money and like lots of money. And like if people are not uh, filling up those beds, there's no more cheap labor. And like cheap labor is like fulfilling quite a lot of markets right now. It's creating a lot of these like cheap commodities that all the people who are not in prison can consume because consumerism <laughs> and capitalism like Oh, I had the most interesting conversation last night on Clubhouse. Um, there's this kid, Colin, that I follow, and he's like a Gen Z entrepreneur. So he started quite a few companies. Um, and he was basically just writing, or he, he, he now sells like beer, but they have this, there's a group of these guys who make these like frat videos that are basically about beer culture and frat life. Um, I think it's called like Beer 98 or something like that. Beer Cast 98, something like that, I don't know. But they have like a ton of sponsorships for just like drinking. And there's a bunch of like little kids who are like pre-college who are like looking up to them because they can't wait to get to college to participate in frat culture. <laughs> the whole thing is kind of nuts, but they're completely monetizing off of it. And I'm not, I'm not really mad. I'm honestly not really mad, but also, I guess it just really makes me think about, you know, what place I want to build or what part in the system I want to play. So there's another part of this that's, um, and this doesn't actually exist, but 
well, okay, no, this part exists. So there's something known as the nonprofit, what did I call it? Like the nonprofit industrial complex. And that's basically the, this idea that like poverty programs create jobs. And specifically, there's a bunch of like, there's a bunch of liberals honestly and unfortunately who I don't know if they're actually interested in poverty elimination as opposed to like poverty alleviation like let's create a program that helps a few people kind of mitigate the disastrous awful harmful effects of poverty but we're not going to really like eliminate poverty because if we eliminated poverty then like you know, who, how would we make any money, right? Like, how would they make any money? I don't know. I don't know how they'd make any money. That's a good, good, good ass question. I don't know. So, hmm. I guess that's really something to like think about, right? Like, think about how many kids go to like. Harvard, Princeton, Williams, Amherst, any of these like small liberal arts colleges and study English, study fucking political science, I don't know, whatever. They don't specialize in shit. Like they don't know how to do anything, but they can go work in the nonprofit sector and like give back, <laughs> right? I'm not even trying to laugh because like it's not that funny, but I mean, there's like a lot of fucking people who do this, but like poverty is still here. Like none of these programs actually have any fucking impact. Maybe not none of them. I think Code 2040 did a lot. But Code 2040 was providing um, space for already talented engineers. And engineers actually build shit, so. Difference, right? But what if there was like an accountability, I'm gonna move up one step. What if there was like an accountability cluster for nonprofits where they actually have to like give their numbers? Where they actually have to talk to someone and say like, here's how much impact we have. Here's how many people we actually helped. What if the population that they were serving were also like their, their were, had seats on the board and could actually say, well, you actually turned this person down last year and you turned this many people down and this many people don't know about your program uh, so talking to some people who've like tried to interact with some of these like poverty elimination programs it sounds like the programs are being like exclusive like they're only giving their services to some people and then making the services unavailable to other people who are actually a part of the populations that whatever grant or philanthropy funding is coming down to actually um, serve and build these orgs like who's accountable like for instance and i think was it then i'm trying to make sure that i have this right and i'm going to look up these statistics myself just to make sure that i actually do get this right but um both i think it was before george bush's no child left behind who the, there was like a president who started shutting schools down he was like yo if your students aren't meeting the bar you're failing the kids, so we're gonna just shut down the school. And I honestly think that's like the way to go. Cause like some of these schools are failing. Like kids, it's like all, there's some, there's like one or two kids who go there and they do well. But for the majority of kids, they are not doing well. Like they're like really doing bad. Like it's just like, they're like violence intervention centers, not even violence, like violence incubation centers, right? Kids come in there to fight, come there to, I don't know, flaunt sneakers, it's like police officers running in and out of the school. It's like, that is not, if that was my school, I don't even fucking know what I would do. I would like, I couldn't imagine. Like, if that was school. I mean, I already know. I have my own, you know, stories about the family law, uh, organization in Alameda County, they're complete bullshit. They just separate families, clearly. Not evidence-based, just nothing. It's fucking awful. Like, it's like all the systems in this country are broken. 
And at least everyone who was on that call yesterday was talking about capitalism and I feel it. Like if we really think about this, the only thing that really matters is like who's gonna bring in the books? Like who's making the money? That's what matters, right? Like who has the ducats? Also, if there's a company that's actually willing to sponsor someone who is like making beer advertisements on YouTube, well then shit, they deserve to like get the money because like some, they have the eyes and the consumers, which is like, when, another thing that gets so complicated is like when I think about these like social media influencers, I just honestly wish there were more black ones. Because like black people are such consumers, like we consume a lot of shit. But like who's producing stuff? Who's producing content? Like who's making, I don't know, it's just like a whole thing. And I thought for a while about going back to school to get my MPP to go into po public policy. Because honestly, I think that's, honest, that's where you can do the most, you can have a lot of impact there. like quite a lot of impact, especially in terms of like education policy. I just wonder like who's accountable as all these students are failing, like who is responsible? Somebody's gotta be like, like taking the hit, you know? Like somebody's gotta be in trouble. When you have like, what is it? Like 60% or something of the black kids in I don't know if this is California or America, but they like can't read, especially like black boys. It's like 70% or some crazy number like that. Like how can you function if you can't read? I don't even, like where do you go from there? Literacy is like a huge problem, a huge problem. Food security is a huge problem. I just, I don't, I really don't know. Like, I don't know what the solutions are, but I know that they're not doing nothing. And I guess I'm really gonna have to think about, you know, like, which part of these problems I'm interested in working on and how I want to make an impact which is really hard, that's hard. Yeah, I don't know. Also, just the more that I'm learning about the trans community, it's just kind of messed up. It's like one community that has like all the, pro like I thought black people had all the problems. Imagine being black and trans. God damn, like. And what was hard, like one of the members of my team is like trans and like, I was, I was uh, coming from a place where I just assumed that just because people weren't like explicitly saying, you know, like, oh, this is a problem for me. I'm struggling in this way, that it meant that they're like, they weren't struggling or that there wasn't a problem, which is completely wrong. That isn't true. Just because like someone is not explicitly saying like, I'm struggling with this doesn't mean they're not struggling. And also it's like, there's so much co like context, like a backstory that's like important to the current story in order to like understand how you can really support this community, which is nuts. Cause I'm like, no, everyone's doing fine. Nobody's complaining. They're all like, everyone's in therapy, everyone's housed. Everyone seems like they're, they figured out their food situation. It's like, just cause they're not saying that, that doesn't mean that's what's really happening. I don't know, it's all nuts. for myself like honestly I care about research but I also I mean I care about the humans who are alive right 
I guess I should announce that there is a uh, summit happening, I think next week. I think it's next Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday and Thursday. And it's like um, the annual poverty summit and there's quite a lot of people who are speaking on it. I almost wanna spend this week and the weekend kind of like going over the summit from last year and making sure that like that I understand like from where we've come. Usually those recordings are online, so I'll check for it, but. I don't know. I really think the accountability piece is like huge. Cause there are all of these nonprofits and like maybe they actually don't know how to like create these like annual reports, right? Like some do, but maybe some they like really don't. And so it's like, how can a nonprofit measure impact? How? And especially like if you're thinking about student data, how can you anonymize student data enough so that like, how can you anonymize student data enough so that like you're not 